Mm. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon to each and every one of you guys out there in YouTube land. You already know this is your girl, Burnett Perkins. And I'm going to be reacting on the New York um, Berry in the Sea of the Snow Blizzard Big Waves. Y'all, this is some serious stuff. Um, I'm not coming on here to be mean or anything. But living in New York, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, drop your comments. Living in New York or living anywhere that it gets cold like this, wouldn't these people be prepared because they know that it's going to snow? New York gets snow all the time. Boston gets snow. Canada, Maine, uh, uh, Indianapolis, um, places that get snow every year Colorado these places get snow so you mean to tell me that these people do not prepare for the winter storm just that just like me living here in Florida and I know that we're gonna have some tornadoes hurricane tropical storms I know this already I'm prepared I'm ready. Not saying that something may not happen. Of course something may happen. The power may go out. The tree may fall on the house, the apartment, the car, whatever. Yeah, those things going to happen. But still have uh, an emergency kit. And when I say emergency kit, I'm not just saying first aid stuff in there. Have your parish food, your... your uh, uh, um, your uh, can opener, not electric, hand can opener, a generator, you know, that's charged up for eight hours. Living in New York and, and dealing with this kind of weather, these are some things. People should not just have a generator that goes outside. I wouldn't dare get a generator that goes outside and burn gas. Amazon have um, generators you can order. You just plug them up in the wall for um, eight hours or whatever. And... You use it. You, you you buy your heater, and, and 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 you plug up your heater. You know. You plug up your heater. Um. Living. That just me. That just me, guys. I have a little small one, and uh, I'm going to order another one today. Yeah, I'm going to order another one today. Um. So I have two. So. If it's the Lord's willing, and I'm here next year, and I know tropical storm is coming here, hurricanes and all that, hurricane season is going to be popping back up. I have two generators. I have one. It's already fully charged. It, I mean, I charge it up, then I unplug it, and I put it away. I have candles. I go to Dollar Tree. You know, the more long candles, I don't get the little short ones. I always buy the long ones. You know, with um, we got Jesus on it, Mary and all that, got God and stuff on it. And then they got the little plain ones, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I stack up on those kind of things, okay? I have five. Now, Saturday, I'm going to go buy five more. And I put them in my laundry room and save them just in case. I, I buy my battery. When I go to Dollar Tree, I buy batteries. All size battery. I buy all size, you guys. And, and they, I put, have, I have them in a box. I have lanterns, you know. I have a can opener, like the electric, but the hand can open, just in case. You, you, you get what I'm saying, y'all? Follow me. So I have two generators. And the thing about that, let me let, let me say this as well. You know, Wi-Fi gonna go out, right? But I download movies on my phone to watch just in case okay now i have a blu-ray dvd player blu-ray now actually i have three but i have a blue i have two blu-rays i have backup movies i buy I, you guys gotta think i buy movies like for five dollars you know movies that i like the old movies a lot of people look at these movies like oh i can watch it on tv you're not thinking you're not thinking, especially if you live in an area with tropical storms and bad weather. You're not thinking. You got to entertain yourself. 
because when that Wi-Fi go out, you're done. You're not going to be able to watch TV. You're going to be watching TV on your phone if you download movies. Come on, guys. Use your brain. It's easy. Come up with a plan. Keep you some canned good foods. Keep you some water. Don't keep that water in your car. But, but you know, like now, rack up on you some water. Prepare. Buy the bottle water from General Dollar. Get you five of them. That's five dollars, and you know the twenty-five cent gonna be added on there. That's five dollars. Stack it in your closet. You gotta think. Every time you get a dollar, go and spend it on a canned good. You get five dollars. Go buy five dollars worth of canned good. Put it in a box in your closet, just in case. You know, it's common sense. So, I'm going to get into this video, you guys. I hope that was some helpful tips to some of the peoples out there. You know, we all on a budget. Not we all, not all of us, but some of us on budget. But it, it, you got to use your don. It's not just sitting on your shoulder for good looks and being pretty. Just to put makeup on it. <laughs> Eyelashes on. Use it. Use it wisely. So you won't, when it comes to that time, to um, run to these stores and buy bread and milk and eggs. I don't see the, I, I don't understand that for the life of me. For the life of me. What you going to get milk for if your refrigerator ain't working? What you gonna go get eggs for if you can't cook? That's the old stuff, old stuff that we used to do. We don't need to do that no more, y'all. Don't go run to no store and buy no damn milk. Stop buying that bread. Well, get your bread, but milk and eggs. Don't you know that stuff gonna spoil? Come on now. Use your dome. Use it. It's on your shoulder for a reason. So let's get to this video, you guys. My prayers are with the people in New York. Um, I looked at a little clipping of it for about a minute or so, and some people did pass away. So let's get to it, you know. Let's, let's get to it. This look pretty rough. Blizzard ended Christmas morning, but the emergency was far from over. With first responders in Buffalo and the North Towns finally able to start maneuvering, the devastation from the fierce winter storm that battered the region with gale force winds, lake effect snow, and bitter sub-freezing temperatures was coming to light. On day three of the storm, desperation was growing. At least 17 people were dead, and authorities said there was no question that the death toll would increase. Some of those who died were found frozen to death in their cars. Others were found on the ground, including a buffalo man. Sophia Clay said her brother's body was found near a convenience store at Kensington and Bailey sometime around 2 a.m. Saturday, but authorities couldn't get to him until 9 p.m. that night. Some had medical emergencies in the height of the storm, and there was no way an ambulance could get to them in time. One died from carbon monoxide poisoning from a blocked furnace vent. More than 29,000 households still had no power, 20,000 of them in Buffalo alone. As the storm cleared and highway crews were able to start clearing roads, National Grid line workers discovered the extent of the damage to the power grid. Not only had trees brought down power lines, but substations themselves were snowed in and frozen over. An 18-foot snow drift was blocking access to one of those substations. There was a very real possibility that it could take until as long as Tuesday for the lights and heat to come back on. 
In the meantime, the shivering souls who were in their third day without heat were resorting to huddling under blanket forts in their living rooms and warming their homes with pots of boiling water. If they were lucky enough to have gas-powered stoves, many gave up and fled their homes. Some found shelter at warming centers. Others accepted the generosity of strangers who opened their homes to them. Dozens warmed themselves at the Buffalo Police Department's Ferry Fillmore District Station. About 200 people sought shelter at Cleveland Hill High School. Governor Kathy Hochul announced that an additional 200 members of the National Guard were deployed, in addition to the 50-odd sent on Saturday, but even they were getting stuck on their way into Buffalo and needed to be rescued. By nighttime Sunday, there were scattered reports of stores being looted. Acting State Police Superintendent Steve Negrelli says law enforcement have two confirmed reports of looting. He called them isolated incidents. Hey, want to know how I got this $50,000 check for an accident I was involved in over five months ago? Look, if you've been injured in a car accident that wasn't your fault, you have to watch this video. There's a loot incidents and not reflective of the greater community. Plows were making first passes through the most impacted areas, but only on major roads, with the goal of allowing emergency workers to get where they were needed to most. Side streets in the city of Buffalo remained untouched. A travel ban remained in place in all of Erie County. But even as first responders were still trying to get to people believed to be stranded in their cars, some people tried to drive and ended up getting stuck compounding the emergency. Mayor Byron W. Brown took to the radio to admonish anyone thinking about trying to drive. I'm not asking. I'm not pleading. I'm telling you, get off the roads right now in the city of Buffalo, the mayor said in an interview on WBN Radio. You are adding to the problem if you are driving in Buffalo. People are dying in cars. That's the reality of it, he said. And it is heartbreaking that people are driving, the mayor added, noting that some people were out sightseeing. Some of those who were stranded were rescued through connections made on a Facebook group that became a lifeline to an untold number. Among them was a Chiptawaga woman stranded on her way back from work at a hospital. A man she had never met scooped her up on a snowmobile and got her to safety. A somber Erie County executive Mark Polencars tried to drive home how serious the circumstances still were at a 9 a.m. storm briefing. Rescue efforts were still underway, he said. Roads were impassable. The blizzard warning was over, but heavy lake effect snow was still falling in the south towns, and the temperatures remained below freezing. This is a major disaster and this is not the Christmas that we wanted. The brutal winter storms that brought Christmas chaos to millions of Americans will be slow to fade, the U.S. National Weather Service said Monday, after heavy snow and freezing cold caused power outages, travel delays and an additional 32 deaths in the east of the country. Most of the eastern United States will remain frozen through Monday before a moderating trend sets in Tuesday, the NWS said in its latest advisory. In Buffalo, western New York, a snowstorm left the city stranded. With emergency services unable to reach the worst hit areas. It's like going to a war zone, and the vehicles along the side of the road are startling, said New York Governor Kathy Hochul, a Buffalo native, where 8 feet 2.4 meters of snow drifted and power was out. Made for life-threatening conditions. Hochul told reporters late Sunday that residents were still in a very dangerous life-threatening situation and warned anyone in the area to stay indoors. More than 200,000 people in several eastern states woke without power on Christmas morning and many more had holiday travel plans canceled. Although a five-day storm featuring blizzard conditions and high winds showed signs of abating. The extreme weather kept wind-chilling temperatures in 48 contiguous U.S. states below freezing over the weekend, leaving vacation travelers stranded with thousands of flights canceled and residents trapped in homes covered in ice and snow. 32 weather-related deaths have been confirmed in nine states, including at least 13 in Erie County where Buffalo is located, with officials warning the number will surely rise. Officials described conditions as historically treacherous in the snow-prone Buffalo region, with hours-long power outages and bodies found in vehicles and under drifts of snow as emergency workers struggled to locate those in need of rescue. 
The city's international airport remains closed until Tuesday and a driving ban remained in effect for all of Erie County. We now have what will be talked about not just today but for generations as the blizzard of 22, Hochul said, adding that the brutality had surpassed the region's prior landmark snowstorm of 1977 in the intensity, the longevity, the ferocity of the winds. Due to frozen electric substations, some residents were not expected to regain power until Tuesday, with one substation reportedly buried under 18 feet of snow a senior county official said. The NWS earlier warned that blizzard conditions in western New York's Great Lakes region had continued into Sunday, with additional snow accumulations of 2 to 3 feet through Sunday night. One couple in Buffalo, across the border from Canada, told AFP Saturday that with the roads completely impassable they would not be making a 10-minute drive to see their family for Christmas. It's tough because the conditions are just so bad, a lot of fire departments aren't even sending out trucks for calls, said 40-year-old Rebecca Bortland. Okay, you guys, um, <laughs> I'm done with this video. Make sure y'all subscribe to my channel, support my channel as well, become a member and grab some stickers, you guys, and tell, so <clears throat> tell someone about your girl. I'm out of here. Y'all have a great day. Oh my goodness.